Hello, rock and rollers. Alan Pond! Ha ha ha! Welcome to the seventh Electrojet Rock Show episode. Yeah, this is the Electrojet Rock Show. I'm your humble host, Jet Electro, coming to you from the entertainment capital, capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. A lot of great rock and roll coming back in town, kids. And I have my esteemed co-host along with us. I'm coming to you from Los Angeles, California, Professor Electro! Welcome back, rockers. Welcome back. Yeah, we're going to do a real fun one today. Uh, You guys knew this one's going to be coming up. We've already covered the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, the greatest singers of all time, the greatest drummers of all time, the greatest bassists of all time. So that's leaving two left, the greatest guitarists of all time. That's going to be tonight's show number seven. And uh, show number eight is going to be on uh, the keyboard players. But tonight, we're going to have a lot of fun. It may probably stir up a lot of controversy with this one. Uh, It's on the greatest rock and roll guitar players of all time. The greatest. So... um, one thing about our show, uh, I want to say, if, uh, if you're from the uh, generations when we grew up with this stuff, like if you're from the uh, 70s and the 80s and you have kids now and they're starting to, to discover um, a lot of the old rock and roll stuff, which I know is really popular, and, and uh, you don't have the time to explain to them why and all that, or you want to start some conversations with them. Uh, turn them on to, to the Electrojet Rock Show, have them listen to the content, and then you guys can discuss after that. That's what we do here. We talk a lot of shop because we do this anyway, and uh, rock and roll is real fun to talk about. And it's a lot of controversy because some people might think so and so is, oh, he's the greatest of all time. And then some people will say, oh, no, he's terrible, blah, blah, blah. So that's what makes it fun. So we're going to start off with the, uh, tonight with the greatest rock and roll guitarist of all time, and I got to go with Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. Um, he has the uh, fire. The he has very good improvisational skills, the compositional skills, the tone, the rock and roll swagger. Uh, plays very. He can play really quiet, really loud, very dynamic. Uh, very interesting studio techniques, um, production-wise, and uh, very phenomenal performer live, and uh, perf- per- uh, phenomenal guitar sound live as well as in the studio. And he do- he did a lot of sneaky things in the studio, such as running direct guitars and stuff like that. I used to work at a, a pretty hip recording studio. As an assistant engineer, and I remember putting on no quarter while I was cleaning cleaning up in the control room, and I heard some things on on the track uh, no quarter off the Houses of the Holy album that I'd never really noticed before, and they were very 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 spooky. So yeah, Jimmy Page, very very interesting, and uh, yeah, he's definitely one of the the greatest rock and roll guitar players of all time, if not the greatest and definitely one of the most influential. Okay. Yeah. A legend, obviously. And another Zeppelin pick. (laughs) Yeah. Well, well for my friend, again, we're going with the, with our, our five, what we feel are greatest. So, you know, what did they contribute the body of work? Uh, like J.E. says, the technical ability, songwriting just trying to get the whole package and it's it's tough because again we're going to exclude some and and again we're sticking mostly to the 70s and 80s might go outside that a little bit but generally that's the eras that we're looking at and so for my first choice and again they're not in any particular order is michael shanker michael shanker of ufo michael shanker of msg the michael shanker group um Especially probably my favorite, of course, a lot of people's favorites is uh, 
him playing on the Strangers in the Night album, the live UFO album. Just great across the board, just that great, again, the neoclassical sound the, uh, style that I like. Um, he's got speed, you know, but he also knows when to kind of, you know, play uh, play less and, you know, less is more kind of thing. And then, you know, he'll build the crescendos. Very, very dynamic, very emotional. And, uh, again, great sound, great tone, great use of feedback, great use of uh, tremolo, the wah pedal, all that stuff. And, just, and also just blasting loud, getting that real edgy, you know, uh, gritty sound, but also making a, you know, really sweet singing tone. Um, and he, what I liked about him too, he's a very precise player. He's not what I call a sonic scribbler. He's not playing a bunch of notes that it's kind of hard to tell what exactly he's playing because there's so much effects on it. He's just very, each note, just where it's supposed to be. So that's my first choice, Michael Schenker. Uh, yeah, that's a great one. I'll tell you what, kids. My second one, these are no particular... <clears throat> These are in no particular order. I got to say, he is the greatest rock and roll guitar player, the greatest rock and roll guitar player of all time, the blonde bomber from UFO, Michael Schenker. Absolutely. Absolutely, Michael Schenker. I've seen him play live a few times, uh, notably opening for Rush at the Santa Monica Civic on the Lights Out Tour. Uh, the first time I'd ever even heard of him was in 1975. And all the musician kids were going, oh, uh, yeah, because we were learning how to play. And uh, the rock bottom riff was the one that everybody said, oh, that's the most complicated riff ever, which uh, that's debatable. He wrote that when he was really young, uh, before his 20s. I do believe, I think he might have been about 17 years old, just an absolute genius on the, on the guitar. Um also, the precision, all the things that the uh, professor was talking about, um, thundering tone, um, and compositional skills, live performance. Yeah, just absolutely thundering, very, very melodic, uh, very, very signature um, themes in his um, in his guitar playing. Um yeah, uh, Michael Schenker, the Blonde Bomber. Yeah, he's he's number two in this segment for me. Yeah, yeah, he's great. I got to see him actually at the Receda Country Club in the mid '80s with MSG. That was one of my one of the best shows I think I've ever seen. You know, if I had to pick out my five best shows, we'll, we'll get to that in another segment. But uh, that might be one of them. Uh, that was a great show. Okay, for my next pick, I'm going with. Richie Blackmore. Richie Blackmore of Deep Purple 1, Deep Purple 2, Deep Purple 3, all the different versions of Deep Purple, the reunion, and then, of course, with Rainbow, uh, with Dio especially, but also with Graham Bonnet, uh, who, you know, he's also a very interesting vocalist, really powerful. And with Joe Lynn Turner, uh, not my favorite vocalist, but really great, and some of the stuff he did, you know, some great songs. So, uh, and even with Doogie White, and even with Blackmore's Night with his wife, um, I just, you know, I, things I like about Richie Blackmore, again, that neoclassical style that I like, has that kind of almost renaissance sound with lutes and, and you know, uh, mandolins and things like that. And he's great blues player also, but also that kind of almost hallucinogenic acid rock thing that he'd get into where there's some sonic scribbling going on, but it's mixed with feedback and just wild guitar smashing, you know. Uh, but then also he had that Miles Davis kind of attitude, that kind of F-off attitude, uh, but also mixed with a little bit of a dry sense of humor. So he's an interesting uh, interesting character also. But just the style and the songwriting is just some great songs that came out of Richie Blackmore. And he always had that kind of uh, East Indian kind of uh, modes that he'd work in and just brought different feels and unusual stuff to uh, um, to a lot of his songs. It had a lot of uh, emotion, a lot of geographic feel. almost felt like some of his songs, you were on a magic carpet ride or you were, you know, in some fable or something like that. 
just a, a great guitar player, great musician, great rock star, Richie Blackmore. Oh, yeah, I love Blackers. Uh, yeah, the, the third album I ever bought, I got it at a garage sale for 50 cents, was a Machine Head, absolute masterpiece, one of the greatest uh, rock and roll albums of all time. Um. Uh, it's the sound on it is uh, really cool. Um, it's got the classic smoke on the water riff on it, and with smoke on the water, they wrote that one on the fly. It was the last track on the album. Made in Japan is one of the, uh, the greatest live rock and roll albums of all time. Not too familiar with uh, In Rock, which I know a lot of you guys are going to say, "Oh yeah, that's that that one's." Uh, it does have. Um, Sweet Child in Time, Child in Time, the song Child in Time. Very, very uh, emotional song. Um, also, I've seen um, footage of Blackmore um, when they were uh, rehearsing and rec- rehearsing for the recording of uh, the Perfect Strangers album when the Mach 2 version of Purple got back together. And Richie's absolutely r- ridiculous in that because... While they're while they're they're playing the songs, he is leaning up against his amp, wearing soccer shorts, and he it does, he does not look at his guitar neck once through the entire thing. Did not look at all, and did not miss a note. And also, um, the Long Live Rock and Roll album. I do believe he played the bass on that. That is a super punchy slam and. Rock and roll record with uh, Ronnie James Dio singing on. I love that choice, Professor. Now, some of these guys are more improvisers, um, and some of them are more constructors. I'm gonna the, my next guy. He could improvise really well, but on record, he's known for his constructing. I'm gonna have to go with number three for me, Randy Rhodes of Ozzy Osbourne, and in the early days before they got signed quite right. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Rand on that. Randy Rhodes saw him a bunch of times at the Starwood in Hollywood in Quiet Riot. Um, Randy had a very unique tone, um, his compositional skills, obviously. Um, he, he, he would construct his solo, and then he'd triple track it for that big kind of wide sound. Phenomenal performer, really cool stage presence, um, very, very unique. He, he plays some things that nobody else would really play. So, yeah, I got to go with uh, Thunderbird, rest in peace, Randy Rhodes, Ozzy Osbourne, guitar player. Love Randy's playing. Great choice. Yeah, I had him on my... Uh on my honorable mentions list, just because I maybe didn't have quite the body of work of some of the other guitar players, but man, it's hard to exclude anybody. I got five honorable mentions here that I'm, I didn't include in my five just because, just because you can only pick five. So, uh, for my next pick, I'm going to go with Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen from the beginning wasn't my favorite guitar player. Like when they first came out, but you know, as I began to listen to him over the years uh, and seeing the effect he's had on on music in general, it's hard to deny to deny him a place among the five. He had that flashy style, and uh, he's also a guy who kind of came from our area and our era. He came up in the local band, local party band scene, and the Hollywood clubs and stuff. So they were a little bit before us, a little bit older than us, but kind of came up the same way that the same road we were trying to trying to move along. And um, so that was always interesting. And then we got to meet him, meet uh, Dave. So that was kind of a turning point for me, too. Uh, you know, when you meet, you meet uh, a rock star and, you know, you're kind of a fan of their music. And then, you know, the meeting goes kind of cool and they're actually turned out to be pretty good people that, you know, that only makes you more of a fan, I think. But, but just his unusual technique and also he's kind of self-taught and... Uh, so that you know, I found that also interesting. He's kind of an out of the box player. So yeah, that was my next pick was Eddie Van Halen of Van Halen. Ah, uh, yeah, King Edward. Gotta love that choice, Professor. Yeah, when he, when the first album came out and was getting played on the radio, um, his sound 
just blew me away and blew everybody away. It was a quantum leap in guitar sounds, not to mention uh, the uh, the tapping. We hadn't really heard that before. It's like, how the heck is he doing that? Um, yeah, Edward, uh, Edward uh, is a phenomenal guitar player. Um, a lot of piano kind of technique that that he he used to take he used to work on piano I think he took piano lessons and a lot of that actually uh, uh, tr- transposed over onto his guitar playing especially with the two handed stuff so I think the two handed stuff has a lot to do with his piano playing so great one there professor my next one I'm gonna have to go with another L A guy George Lynch from Dokken. Very signature sound, very original guitar player, can improvise uh, very, very well, um, but still a lot of signature content in his playing, and uh, maybe he improvised it in the studio, And but then when he'd play live, he'd, he'd keep it, and very, very ferocious player, love George Lynch's playing. The Lynch Mob albums are great. Um, I, I think I like the second one maybe a little bit better than the first Lynch Mob album that was produced by uh, Keith Olsen at Goodnight LA Studios. That thing rocks. It's slamming, the whole band slamming on that. But yeah, I'm a big fan of George Lynch's playing. Love George's playing. George Lynch, my number three. Okay, great choice. Yeah, he was definitely on my top ten here. In fact, it's interesting that a lot of the ones I don't have in my top five are in my next five, and there's some of, some of those you've picked. Yeah, that was my actually that was my number four pick. So I had Page, Schenker, Rhodes, and Lynch. So Lynch was my f- number four. I gotta correct that. So uh, what are you? What were you going to say, Professor? Oh yeah, you know these aren't in any particular order, of course, but it's just you know. These are just kind of how they came out. So we would, you know, I wouldn't say that Michael Schenker is or isn't my favorite guitar player. It's hard enough picking five guitar players and then trying to pick your favorite among them or the top, the number one. It's pretty hard to do. So five is hard enough. But uh, my next choice is Carlos Santana. I think Carlos Santana. One thing you got to look at is longevity. I mean, this guy played at Woodstock and he's still touring. So that you got to look at that, and then his work with so many great musicians, and how many great musicians came out of his band, like Neil Sean and Greg Raleigh, um, or went through his band. And he's just got a lot of style and emotion and great tone. And I think one of his one of his albums, uh, maybe my favorite of his albums, would be maybe Inner Secrets. Uh, but he's just got so many. I mean, I have no idea off the top of my head how many albums he has, but he's just very prolific artist and uh, just a great guitar player and just a, a lot of uh, a lot of emotion, a lot of dynamic elements. So Carlos Santana, that was my next pick, number four. Wow, Professor, uh, that one was surprising for me. I never knew that you were that much of a Santana fan. Um, uh, yeah, I do like Carlos a lot. Very emotion, emotional player. And uh, when I uh, played guitar in cover bands, like working on the cruise ships and all that kind of thing. Um, yeah, very interesting choice. Professor, I'm yeah, I, think, I think I picked him kind of, you know, because he also brought a crossover into rock and with a, kind of a Latin element. And then uh, also, I don't know that he, I would say he's among my top five favorite guitar players but he's among the, my top 10 but as far as being the best i gotta put him up there so yeah that's one of the reasons i picked him also wow really good one professor okay now this is my last one <clears throat> clearing the throat then yeah, might uh this is my last one number five pick um I was thinking about Alan Holdsworth, who is probably the greatest guitar player of all time, but he's more of a a jazz guy. So I'm going to have to go with Bruce Bouillet from Racer X. Um, The thing with Bruce is he can literally play anything. He's got a phenomenal tone. Racer X, one of the most ferocious bands I've ever seen live. 
Saw him at the country club, I think, two or three times. And, uh, yeah, absolutely ferocious. Paul Gilbert, I love his playing. Bruce, I think, is a little more outside the box than Paul's playing. Um, a, a, a little more exotic in the note choices. Um, he's an absolute genius on the guitar. He sees all the dots. He can improvise. And uh, or he if, if he can play like if he's doing a session, whatever's needed, whatever they want. Also a great engineer, uh, recording engineer. He has a Grammy for the um, for one of the uh, Motorhead. I think it was the Mo- Motorhead uh, cover of Metallica song. Yeah, I got to go with Bruce Bouye. Yeah, great choice. He's uh, phenomenal. Yeah. So my. My final pick is uh, Glenn Tipton of Judas Priest. And this was a hard one because there were three or four other guitar players that I was considering, but either their style, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, was a little too bluesy for this, you know, selection. And, uh, you know, I had George Lynch and Warren Martini, but I had to go with Glenn Tipton, mostly, I think, because of his longevity and how much he's contributed uh, to the hard rock metal scene and uh, his creativity, his riffs, his songwriting, how he compliments the band and how he compliments his other guitar player that he's playing with. Um, especially when he was playing with KK Downing, they were a great uh, duo. They had kind of contrasting, but, but complementing styles. But Glenn Tipton always had those shredding leads. And he was also more of a precision guitar player in the same way Michael Schenker is. He's not really a scribbler. And he does a lot of uh, really interesting lead-ups and lead-downs and just some really cool riffs that uh, I think were the basis of a lot of their songs. So, yeah, Glenn Tipton, the Judas Priest, my final choice. Oh, yeah, Professor, that one's a great one. Yeah, Glenn Tipton, he's the meat and potatoes of Judas Priest, I would say. Uh, Saw him play live. Very, very tasteful player. Great riffs. Okay, kids. Well, this has been a fun one, an interesting one. We left a lot of people off the list. And I want to remind you guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It'll really help us out. Tell all your friends that love to talk shop and listen to people talking about shop like us. And um, you can give us some ideas in the comment section of uh, what we left off or how could we leave off so-and-so or... Yeah, we really agree with what you guys are saying on this one particular guitar player that we might have mentioned tonight on uh, the Electrojet Rock Show number seven. Greatest rock and roll guitar players of all time. So what do you think, Professor? Is it about time to sign off? It's about that time. Okay, kids. Well, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And this is Jet Electro. Signing off for, for, to you from Las Vegas. Rock and roll! Rock and roll!